Just let me introduce our guest here today, His Imperial Highness Crown Prince Akihito of Japan, who is here as an emissary for his father, the Emperor, and we're very honored and delighted to have him here. It's a return of a very enjoyable visit that we had some time ago in, in his country. The 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 out of deference to our guests, and because we have a limited time here for a meeting, I'm not going to take any questions. Sir, do you this is a photo opportunity. Political retribution against senators who vote against you? No questions. No. You know, you've no, said you're going to make them heat, feel the heat. No answers to questions. If Judge Bork wants to take himself out of this, if it becomes too painful for him, would you then consider withdrawing? You'll have to catch me on another shot. Yeah, it is. The knocker's only tie, sir, that you're wearing. I think. Is that the tie that Prime Minister gave you? No, it isn't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking of it. That kind of question I have. We're sorry we asked. We thought we had a story. No, if you'll excuse his wife, we would go inside here for a brief. Is the knocker having a parade? Is the knocker having a parade? Speakers on the right. And uh, who are you going to put over here? Bob Bird, Bird on the left. Bird. Well, I wonder if you like right to have them all lined up on the other side. Oh, so they go over there. Hey, how are you? How are you? You want to stay where? Steve yeah. Company over here. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's just, they let you down yesterday. Slide in there. No protocol or arrangements. Thank you. Robert be a little late, he said he'd be here. <laughs> well, how are you today? Good. 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 I shouldn't tell you the story, but I will. You know the story about John Paul Jones and the battle, famous battle, and when he said, I have not yet begun to fight. And one bloody Marine down in the deck among all the bodies raised up in his elbow and says, there's always one stupid bastard that never got the word. <laughs> <laughs> You want a white gem right for the uh, for Senator Dole, or shall we go ahead? I'm here. Senator Dole. I mean, Senator Bird. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, do we have a report on his whereabouts? You know, he's, he's on his way. He said he might be running a little late. I don't think. One thing we could do. If we went ahead and some of the things, oh, right? I'd say. The speaker, could I interject? Excuse me, Mr. President. One thing the speaker had raised before Senator Bird gets here that speaker would raise specifically is that Mr. Duarte is uh, coming up soon. Uh, we had discussed what Mr. Duarte might do on the Hill, and this present speaker is uh, kindly offered to gather members together or in, in some form that, we, form that we might suggest for Duarte to talk to the membership as, as did the President Aris. And I mentioned, uh, we talked about that, Frank, with the speaker the other night, and the Secretary hadn't had a chance to about that, but I thought we might uh, 
I mean, know that. When is that again? Next Tuesday or? Uh, yes, sir. Coming on the fourteenth, is he? Now, is is it? As I understand it, you you're having him here at the White House on the fourteenth, uh, and you have a state dinner that evening. That's right. That's and, right. That's uh, Wednesday we, night. We could uh, we could do it that day, or we could have him the next day, or whatever is is appropriate or convenient that you think would be helpful. Uh, Normally, you know, we have an arrangement where a visiting head of state comes and is received by the members in the Foreign Affairs Committee room at a tea or a coffee. Now, we can do that kind of thing, and if you want to expand it uh, to the caucus room, uh, where larger numbers can be accommodated, and that's usually a question and answer session with the press not there except for the initial or if you wish, we can do something similar to what we did with, uh, with Argus by uh, arranging for a joint session of the Democratic Caucus and the Republican Conference uh, and uh, have it on the House floor. Uh, whatever you think would be helpful, whatever, you know, we, we're willing to work with you. Received by any phony democracy moves, and I did emphasize the fact that I thought we couldn't even have such agreements uh, had there not been a contra force in, uh, in place. If this was the pressure that brought all these things about, I don't think Ortega would have signed any uh, of the Guatemala agreement if it wasn't for that concern. And uh, I Welcome. You. I want you to know that I, I think that I emphasized our adherence to both those agreements, but that uh, we had to be on guard and aware and so forth. And I suggested in my remarks that with regard to the proposal of $270 million, that the emphasis on humanitarian aid, if they, they had arrived with a ceasefire and so forth, and that if this thing proceeded and the agreement was working, then that money could be turned to helping the democratization. We used it and it would be benefiting both sides. But uh, I welcome your comments and your support, of course. Mr. President, I think the, uh, the first thing we have to concentrate on is a ceasefire, getting a ceasefire in place. Uh, I've been Encouraged by the fact that both in Guatemala and El Salvador, conversations have begun directly between the government and the armed opposition. I don't know whether they lead to a ceasefire. I hope they will. In uh, Nicaragua, we've had a more difficult situation with the Nicaraguans saying, no, they have to talk to you and to our government in the United States. And we're saying we're not going to do that. And we're saying, no, you have to talk to the countries. And they're saying, no, we're not going to talk to them. But I find they, there is a, a, a way in which that ceasefire could begin, and I think that's our first priority. Both sides, if I understand right, they have agreed to an intermediary, uh, in the person of uh, Colonel Von Louis Bravo uh, and his, uh, his team. I don't see anything wrong. These countries have indicated me that that would be satisfactory to them, unless they've changed their mind. And I am told that uh, Rodrigo Arias, uh, they <coughs> Mr. Yes. Mr. President, how are you? Hi, how are you? See you in the Roy. I think we've got a couple of minutes to sit down. Why don't we come okay. in? Okay, all right. You want to over well, I just wanted you to look me in the eye and tell me that you're ready to face the press out there. <laughs> That'll be tougher than anything you'll be asked to do for a while. Well, I hope we'll just get to the north, don't we? <laughs> well, I will officially ask you if you will serve. Yes, sir, I will, well, and I'm deeply honored and very much appreciate your confidence on that. Well, to do it, Mamie. You're kind of well thought of in a number of corridors around here, and uh, uh, are you willing to become his deputy? Oh, I am, Mr. President. Thank you for the honor. Well, 
pleased to do it. As soon as they tell me that the crowd is assembled out there, we'll, we'll go out and defy the press. And we've got a few things to do, I think, <laughs> next year or so, uh, particularly on the aviation front. So we'll be, we'll be back in touch. Uh, well, I appreciate both of you doing it. I'm really looking forward to it. It's nice to have such a solid base to build on what group.